Good morning, and welcome to Worship at the Bath Church, United Church of Christ in Bath, Ohio. I'm Jill Small, the interim senior pastor here, and I'm happy to welcome you to worship on this day when we observe the reign of Christ and also prepare for Thanksgiving. Today, when we pass the peace of Christ, I hope that you'll do that with those who are worshiping physically with you, and also, if you can, to leave a tweet or a text or a comment and share the peace of Christ with those worshiping virtually with you today as well. Following today's worship at 9.30, we will have coffee hour. The link was in this week's splash. If you didn't get the splash, please just go to the church's website, bathucc.org. You'll find a link to the splash there, and that's where you'll find the link to coffee hour as well, 9.30 following this service. As we prepare to give thanks to God for all the blessings that we receive, let us open our hearts and minds and be together in worship even while we're apart. Let us worship God now in spirit and in truth. Welcome to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Come, let us praise God together. We join our hearts in thanking the creator. Come, let us praise God together. We join our voices in honoring the Christ. Come, let us praise God together. We join our spirits in receiving the comforter. Come, let us praise God together. For this is the day that God has made. voice in prayer. God of grace and peace, we celebrate the victory of life over death, of love over hate, of confidence over fear. May we embrace the unity offered by your spirit. May we dwell in the presence of the living Christ now and always. And in Jesus' name, we pray and God hear us now as we lift our voices in silent prayer to you. Gracious God, we are so grateful you have heard our prayer. Amen. And now, please join me in passing the peace. In this virtual space, you can do it by commenting on Facebook, sending a tweet, sending a text, commenting on Christian World Media or YouTube. May the peace of Christ be with you. Oh 
please join me in this prayer for illumination. Oh God, lover of humanity, joy of creation, comforter of all, pour out your spirit on us that we may hear your ancient words in a new key. Inspire us to sing your praise in every land and with every generation. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Our first testament lesson comes to us today from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 24, verses 11 through 16 and 22 through 24. Stand it empty upon the coals, so that it may become hot, its copper glow, its filth melt in it, its rust be consumed. In vain I have wearied myself. Its thick rust does not depart to the fire with its rust. Yet, when I cleansed you in your filthy lewdness, you did not become clean from your filth. You shall not again be cleansed until I have satisf satisfied my fury upon you. I, the Lord, have spoken. The time is coming. I will act. I will not refrain. I will not spare. I will not relent. According to your ways and your doings, I will judge you, says the Lord God. The word of the Lord came to me. Mortal, with one blow, I am about to take away from the delight of your eyes. Yet you shall not mourn or weep, nor shall your tears run down. And you shall do as I have done. You shall not cover your upper lip or eat the bread of the mourners. Your turbans shall be on your heads and your sandals on your feet. You shall not mourn or weep, but you shall pine away in your iniquities and groan to one another. Thus Ezekiel shall be assigned to you. You shall do just as he has done. When this comes, then you shall know that I am the Lord God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Good morning, Bath Church. Good morning, Bath Church kids. I have a riddle for you this morning. I'm going to show you a couple different objects, and I want you to think about what they have in common. Okay? Are you ready? Okay, here's the first one. A scarf. A pair of glasses. A welcome sign for a door. And an apple. What do you think? What do all of these objects have in common? So I'll give you a second to think about it. All right, well, I want to let you know. These things all help us see Jesus better. They help us see Jesus in the world. Okay, so you may be looking at my scarf and my sign and an apple. Maybe the glasses seem a little bit obvious, but what in the world would these things, how would these things help us see Jesus in the world? Well, the trick to this little riddle is these items represent something else. These items represent the people around us that we're called to serve. So we are called to clothe the naked and we are called to feed the poor. We are called to welcome stranger and we are called to see those who are struggling. So Jesus says when we do these things, we do them for him. Not only do we do them for the people we're helping, but we do these things for him. So in other words, that means when we help a stranger, when we share our food with someone who's hungry, when we welcome someone who's different than us or stand up for someone who needs support or donate items to those who are less fortunate and don't have the things they need. Whenever we do those things, we're not only doing them for them, but we're doing them for Jesus. So my challenge for you this week is when you see items like clothing, things to help us see better, um, food, uh, things around our home like a welcome mat or flag or something like that, anything around your home and what you're surrounded with, I want you to be reminded of that those things are representing people around you. So I want you to see your neighbor as Jesus. I want you to see a stranger as Jesus. I want you to see your family as Jesus, your teacher as Jesus. And I want you to see Jesus in everything around you because you know what happens? When we see Jesus around us, we're gonna act like Jesus too. And we're gonna to wanna to do things for Jesus. And it's just a big Jesus fest, okay? So that is your challenge for this week. And I want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving, and I hope you enjoy your wonderful day. And before we go today, why don't we finish our time together with the Lord's Prayer? So please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you next time. On this Reign of Christ Sunday, just before Thanksgiving, I found a beautiful prayer by Roddy Hamilton that I'd like to share with you. Create a th throne room for yourself here, O Christ, but let it be the empty seat beside the anxious, the lonely chair next to the confused, the vacant pew next to the hungry and rain, O Jesus. May your rain be good news to those who seek out truth, and may we join them in the search, finding you walking the streets or breaking bread or sitting by bedsides. May we find you at the borders, on the edge of things, crossing over with the foreigner. May we find you among children, learning to finger paint as teachers to those who long to enjoy life again. May we find you with the worried, silenced with nothing to say, 
and space enough to keep it. May we find you on the wrong side of the tracks, going where you should not and finding a place to lay your head among the lost. May we find you singing our songs of justice and peace and removing your crown to do so. May we find you with a word that lives in the hopes of the afraid and a comforting peace for those who are broken. May we find you laughing at the powerful, unnerving, what folks think so secure, while welcoming those who have nothing into your throne room. Oh, Jesus reigning the world, with your upside down kingdom, may we find the faith to stand with you, sovereign of life and servant of all. Gracious God, hear this prayer and be with those of us in both our good times and our bad. This week, our fellow church members have been celebrating life and mourning loss. Indeed, as the world does throughout every single day. Right now, God, be with everyone as the world is going quiet again behind doors, waiting out a solution and a cure. Be with those who are sick, be with those who have lost loved ones or have loved ones far away from them that they cannot see. On this Thanksgiving, let us be grateful for everything we have with us right now. We may be at smaller gatherings with fewer people, but let our hearts be at peace, knowing that we will soon all be together again. In your son's name we pray, amen. On this day, as we sing of our praises and give thanksgiving, we also give of our whole selves to God and the church. Be of that mind now as you consider giving of your time, talent, and treasure.
Gracious and holy God, we are so grateful for your gifts of time, talent, and treasure. Let us use what has been given to us to make real your realm on this earth. Let us take these gifts before us in great thanksgiving. Amen. Today, Jesus speaks to us on Christ the King Sunday in words from the gospel according to the school of Matthew. Today, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Hear now the words of the evangelist. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick, or in prison, and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. Then the king will say, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom that has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Today, we hear stories about the reign of a mighty king at the end of time. Ezekiel brings a message of hope to exiles in Babylon, and Jesus brings a message of hope to people who lived in an occupied nation. Now, when we see the word nation in the Bible, it is always about Israel. When we see nations, it is always about everyone else. Today, particularly about those who have not been given care, consideration, and compassion. In Jesus' parable, the sheep and the goats are equally surprised, and they ask, when? When did we see you hungry or thirsty? When did we see you naked or a stranger or sick or in prison? On some level, I think the sheep and the goats both know, both groups know that they have or they have not done those things that offer hope and peace and love and joy, those things that are 
going to be very familiar to us that we're going to think about very soon because they are the hallmarks of the Advent season. But today, we're still in Pentecost. We are at the very end of Pentecost, the 25th Sunday of the long green season, a date that is also known as the reign of Christ. Not the rule of Christ, and I think that's a little different because the only rule that Jesus ever gives is to love one another. And that brings us back to the question, when? When did we see you? You know, sometimes we are the sheep and sometimes we are the goats. Jesus's words in Matthew remind us that if we have heeded the teachings of Jesus through the whole of this year, then we will have fed the hungry and we will have given drink to the thirsty. We will have clothed the naked and we will have tended the sick and visited those in prison. We will have helped others on their journeys, literally and figuratively. We will have ministered to those who are struggling, not once, not twice, not even often, but regularly as individuals and as a congregation gathered, even when we are apart in the name and spirit of the living Christ. In everything we are and in everything we do as followers of Jesus, we share in the life and work of the divine in the world. And that is extraordinary. We notice things that are extraordinary, but often we take the ordinary things of life for granted. A loved one's voice, a child's fingerprints on a, a window, uh, being able to go to work, being able to play, sometimes even being able to get a good night's sleep. I think those are really good things for us to remember as we approach Thanksgiving, especially this Thanksgiving when we might be tempted to complain because so much is so different for so many of us. And yet, we have ample reason to give thanks. There is no holiday anywhere else in the world like our Thanksgiving. It doesn't celebrate a victory. It doesn't honor a hero. It doesn't mark a celestial event. It is simply about remembering to be grateful. And as we do so, and as we step into a new year, God's world is changing all around us and within us. And that reminds me of a story, a favorite story of mine. I've used it uh, many times, including in my MDiv thesis. Uh, if you don't know it, I'm happy to be able to introduce you to it. And if you do know it, I hope it will once again sing in your heart. It is The Fall of Freddy the Leaf by Leo Buscaglia. I'd like to read a little bit of it for you now. At dawn, the wind came that took Freddy from his branch. It didn't hurt at all. He felt himself float quietly, gently, and softly downward. As he fell, he saw the whole tree for the first time. How strong and firm it was. He was sure that it would live for a long time, and he knew that he had been part of its life, and that made him proud. Freddy landed on a clump of snow. It felt soft and even warm. In this new position, he was more comfortable than he had ever been. He closed his eyes and fell asleep. He did not know that the spring would follow winter and that the snow would melt into water. He did not know that what appeared to be his useless dried self would join with the water and serve to make the tree stronger. Most of all, he did not know that there, asleep in the tree and in the ground, were already plans for new leaves in the spring. The beginning. When God's amazing work of creating, redeeming, and sustaining is over, when the last star has dimmed and the last leaf has fallen, God's love 
and hope and peace and joy will persevere. And from eternity, the king will say, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom that has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Whatever challenges we face and whatever good we can do for one another, we are loved and we should share that love with each other. That is cause for thanksgiving. May the grace and love and peace and joy that come from the living God be with each of us from the beginning to the beginning. Amen. now may the love of God and the peace of Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and abide with us. Go in peace and with joy. Amen.